Hi, this is Craig and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. If you've been watching the channel, you know I took an exquisite X5, a 50-foot catamaran, and sailed it from Cape Town, South Africa, across the equator, all the way to the Caribbean. It was an amazing adventure, and in this episode, we sail away from Namibia on our way to St. Helena in the middle of the South Atlantic, but not before we lose Tomas. That's right. He's leaving us, the training wheels are off, and we gotta sail this boat all by ourselves. And in this episode, we have some good things and some bad things. Some good things are we get dolphins on the bow, we have some breakdowns that we get to fix on our own, uh, and the downside is we have some really choppy seas that make me incapacitatedly seasick. Yep, that happens in this episode. Before we get into this episode, I just want to thank A, my patrons, some of which who have been around since the beginning of the channel, long since before I was doing any of these transatlantic voyages, and in this particular voyage, a bunch of sponsors that jumped on board to help defer the costs of me flying halfway around the world and spending eight weeks away from my regular job. Thanks so much. I couldn't have done it without you guys. And uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's get on to this episode. We anchor and hoist the sail. Hello, welcome back to Cruising Off Duty and welcome to beautiful Walfus Bay. <laughs> yeah, as you can tell, not much to see, really not much to do here. There's just this constant fog every morning, every day, all the time from that Arctic uh, current. This time of year, it is June 5th. It is freaking freezing here. I'm just in a light coat right now because I don't plan to stand out here for too much longer. But yeah, so you can't see anything. There is a lot of wildlife here. There's a lot of seals. Obviously, you saw the thing with the seal and the pel pelicans on the front of our boat. Very cool. But yeah, the town is pretty industrial. Now, one thing about this water, we had already planned a service stop here when Tomas gets off. Two of uh, the members from Phoenix Marine who build the boat were coming anyway to just do some last minute tweaks on the boat after we'd been pounding through the waves for five days. So it was already pre-planned. But when we got in here and we were trying to make water, the uh, Spectra water maker just literally said, nope, sorry, too many parts per million. I think it's above 700 parts per million. It won't put water in your tank if it's that bad. We'd already cleaned the filters and it still told us there was uh, the water was too dirty to go in the tank. So. We called Spectre, or Tomas called Spectre, and found out this area has so much plankton. Uh, there's a ton of seals here. I don't know if that's what causes it. There's, you saw all the jellyfish when we were coming in. So much plankton in this water that the uh, pre-strainer, I don't know much about water makers, but there's like a pre-strainer, then a filter, then a membrane. It goes through a bunch of different stages. The pre-filter got so clogged with plankton that it couldn't filter anymore. And that's uh, Spectre was smart enough to notice that and just said, nope, not making water here. Too dirty. So. Yeah, it's not really pollution from what I understand, it's just so much plankton here and that's probably why there's so much um, seals and other wildlife and jellyfish here. So, we have to get that fixed before we leave because we're certainly not going to do that big passage from here to St. Helena with a water maker that doesn't work. So we're making sure we get that working before we set sail. And on top of that, we have another problem. Our uh, we paid for a weather planner, or Sean paid for a weather planner, and he said, don't leave <laughs> till at least Friday, because the next two days are supposed to be crazy windy and high seas, so uh, 30 knots sustained, gusting to 35 sort of thing uh, for the next two days, and of course, very, very big seas, and it would have been right on our beam as we were sitting to St. Helena, the, the wind would have been coming out of the south, so uh, yeah. It would have been a very, very unpleasant sail. So he's saying, don't even risk it, stay here. So we're gonna stay here at least until Friday. Where our intention was to come in Tuesday, do a little touristy stuff on Wednesday, reprovision and be out of here on Thursday, but now it's gonna be at least Friday. So today's gonna to be kind of a lazy day, get some boat work done. Tomorrow, we're gonna to try and go to the dunes um, and do some ATVing or four wheel drive quads or something. Um, that's the plan and then hopefully leave Friday. But if the weather doesn't improve, then we won't we won't leave. We're not gonna rush it and risk it, so uh, there we go. Problems with sailing is sometimes you just gotta hunker down when the weather's bad because, uh, you know, you're sort of depending on your sails and if it's too windy to sail comfortably, then you can't just power on big massive engines and power through it like you can on a big power boat, so. So uh, maybe I'll show you the uh, predict wind chart to show you how scary uh, the forecast is. Okay, Sean just pulled up predict wind for us to see it. This is what we're looking at and red is bad. And that would have been, we're coming, this is our line, the yellow line would have been our path. So we would have been having that at the beam and it would have been pretty bouncy. So we're gonna hold off until it's- Yep, 40 knots. 40 knots of gusts. So we're just gonna hunker down, do a little tourism. We're doing the ATV's quads tomorrow, is that the plan? Chasing big flamingos. 
Chasing pink flamingos? Awesome. Well, we'll do something. Hopefully it's warmer than it is out there now. So. They show the whole place torn up, man. Yeah, I told them they're doing service on the boat, so they're, they're adjusting on things and that water maker issue, so. All right, so that's why we're hanging out in Walvis Bay longer than expected. Okay, here we are. Uh, I guess it's the 6th of June. It's kind of a sad moment. Tomas is leaving us. The training wheels are off. <laughs> We have to... No, don't go! Please don't go! We can't do it alone! Uh... Now you're on your own, guys! Take care! Thanks. Thanks for everything. This, he knows this boat inside out and backwards, so... Take care, guys! See ya! See ya! Missing you already! <laughs> it's nice and... At least it's nice and smooth this morning. Usually the wind picks up midday, so... Oh, it's still cold out here. So now we have to do this, the rest of this voyage, which is the most of this voyage by ourselves. Um, yeah, so one guy who knew this boat inside, out and backwards, could hear something and know exactly what it was, was the issue is gone. Uh, yeah, I'm a little nervous, just a wee bit. Okay, welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. This is June 7th, Friday, and we're about to leave Industrial Walvis Bay. Let me just flip it around. I haven't shown you already. This is what this harbor looks like. Now for anyone coming here, this is actually the harbor you need to come to if you want to go to Swakop. It's actually Swakop Mung or something. Mun. It's German. It's supposed to be very touristy, very cute, lots of good restaurants and stuff. But they don't have a harbor. So this is the harbor that's closest. Uh, our tour guide yesterday actually lives there and does tours here and it's about 30 kilometers. So you'd either need to get a tour from here to there or rent a car or something. Uh, yeah, so something I'd like to check out in the future. Everybody in the viewers in the comments from the previous update video were saying that's definitely the town we want to visit. Uh, yeah, so now we have to get fuel. And of course the fuel dock isn't on this little main uh, like harbor where the pleasure craft have to go. It's on the other side where the big freighters have to go so we've been told we got to go around tie up to a police boat and uh, figure it out from there so uh, I'll bring you along this is our favorite boat that we've been anchored next to look That's at my dream yacht right there yeah they are some pride in ownership isn't there I want to I want <laughs> I want this yacht and you see it is actually a sailing yacht it's a motor sailor you see the rig up in yep. the front and the boom so right? pretty but then I want to leave it exactly like it is on the exterior and I want to completely deck out yeah. the interior get it all all sweet inside so nobody ever breaks in but once you're in there think of the stories that boat could tell now if you thought the harbor where we were anchored where the pleasure craft were supposed to be was a little industrial looking check out what we found when we went around the bend to the area they told us we had to go get fuel nothing but cranes freighters fishing boats and we were told we had to weave ourselves in amongst all those to find a police boat and tie up to that. We were assured by everyone this was the only place to pick up fuel, but we were the only pleasure craft. I mean, we were bright white, brand new catamaran in amongst all these, well, let's just say very salty looking boats. Get some work done. Now we've got to weave our way in where that guy was, I think, over there and tie alongside a police boat in order to get gas. Okay, we're wedged in here pretty tight. The guys on the police boat are helping us pull forward and look, I've got this boat right beside us. So I, my job is to run around with a fender and make sure that if we drift like we are sort of doing now, that my fender is here to block any bumping of these big metal rusty ships. This is definitely not the harbor you ever know to come into because look, I'll just pan around. Ooh, we are getting pretty tight. Look at this. This is what we had to come to to get fuel. I mean, how would you ever know to come here? Okay, now they bring the big fuel line across the police boat to our stern of our boat. And meanwhile, in the background, this massive freighter is getting loaded. I don't even want to guess what has just started piling out of this rusty boat. It's steaming. Whatever it is, is steaming. So that doesn't sound like something that would be bilge water. And it looks pretty black. So I have a gut feeling it is, you know what, you know what it is. Just a gut feeling. That is some pretty filthy 
filthy water coming out there. Luckily the wind, as you can see from the mist, it's blowing away from me so I don't have to smell it. So now Neil's taking back all our extra jerry cans. These are our jerry cans as well. We got them uh, recycled in uh, Cape Town for cheap, so they don't all have the perfect yellow diesel color, but uh, I'm guessing the diesel is very cheap here, so we're gonna get some extra. Because I'm sure St. Helena is not going to be cheap. Okay, we are untied from the uh, police boat and uh, doing our little pivot. Good thing about a catamaran with two engines, you can pretty much pivot on your own uh, circumference, your own radius. And uh, we are out of here. Out of customs, immigration, I guess. Got some last minute provisioning. I bought some rum because there was no rum on this boat, believe it or not. Sacrilege. And uh, yeah, should be a good rest of the voyage towards St. Helena Island in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Cool, isn't it? As you leave Walvis Bay, it tends to be a little sunnier in there because the cold current isn't there. But as we're motoring out, Check that out. On the horizon, it's just fog. So we're gonna be motoring back into the Antarctic current and therefore the fog that accompanies it even in the middle of the day. Even before we made it to the fog, we were greeted by a huge pod of dolphins. I know a lot of you say you like the ambient real life sounds I put in sometimes in stereo, so let's do that now with these dolphins. Put on the headphones. They don't get tired of doing this. It's gotta be like a workout though, swimming this fast. Look at this. This is a swell in half. Whoa. It never ceases to amaze me how long the dolphins will go on and on swimming. Now, maybe it's not the exact same dolphins. Maybe they take turns, but it went on for so long. We actually got tired of filming them. That's how long it went on for. And believe me, we enjoyed every minute of what we did see. It would take us seven days to sail from Namibia to St. Helena Island in the middle of the South Atlantic. And we had no lack of wind. Not only did we have plenty of wind to sail pretty damn fast, but we also had what's called a confused sea. That's when the wind comes from one direction, but the swells from a storm in the ocean come from a different one. And for the first time in my sailing life, I actually got seasick. Not just a little green, I've been that before a couple of times. A little green, but never actually sick. That happened in this passage. And I was kind of out of commission for a couple of days, but let's let Craig from back then explain it to you. Hi, this is Craig and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. This is June 10th. We're finished our third day of uh, sailing from Namibia to St. Helena Island. I haven't filmed for the last couple of days, last two or three days. I want to tell you the truth, I was incapacitatedly seasick. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay over the wind. We we're sailing at about 25 knots of wind. Whoa, big wave came over the bow just now. It has been sunny or mostly sunny, so the weather has been okay. It's just starting to warm up now. It was freezing cold leaving Namibia. We were all dressed in layers and long underwear and stuff. Just never expected that in Africa. Just in case you're wondering what I'm looking at, I'm in my cabin. I did record something like this outside with my cinematic camera, but it's so windy and wavy and bangy 
that I wasn't sure if you could even hear me, so I'm gonna do another one in here. Every once in a while, I'll look out the window because I'll just show you what I'm seeing. Every once in a while, one of these big swells comes along and slams right into my window. All of this bouncing and confused seas has made it not only hard to sleep, but I got very, very seasick. I didn't get seasick on my last passage from Las Palmas to St. Lucia, but it was A, much calmer, and B, we did all downwind sailing pretty much. We had our spinnaker out a lot, and when you're in a catamaran sailing downwind, it's way more, well, it's perfect. It's so comfortable, it's like being in a condo. Um, we are on a beam or broad reach. We have a huge storm was to the south of us and has sent us these huge 15, whatever sometimes people say, 20 foot swells. Um, and the swells aren't so bad because they're big and the boat kind of just lifts up and then drops down. What makes it hard is when there's wind coming from a different direction than the swells. And then you get what's called a confused sea. So when you get confused sea, what happens is your, your, your catamaran already is way more twitchy than a monohull. When you hit, get a wave on your left or a swell on your left, it goes up. Then when it hits the right one, it goes back really quickly. And now you've got a confused sea where you're also going forward and backward. So you're doing this sort of all over the place, random movement thing, which is really hard for your inner ear to get adjusted to, uh, especially when you're down below and you can't see the horizon or you're at night on night passages. Um, yeah, so word to the wise, word to me, don't assume you will never get seasick just because you don't get seasick on your own boat. If you only sail at the daytime, it's way easier. When you're in control of the boat, you're you're seeing the waves coming, you're, you're anticipating the movement of the boat, and on a Molina Hall, it's not nearly as stochastic as it is on a catamaran. So, um, Things are flying around um, but yeah this is my third day I feel fine now the first day I was absolutely seasick could barely stand uh, I was doing my first one of my first night watches and I had to go right in the logbook every hour we write in the logbook what's going on and when I went inside and tried to write in the logbook I felt instantly like I was gonna throw up I had to run for the rail uh, yeah, it was not fun not not pretty not fun and um, that's I tried to muscle through it and do the rest of my watch couldn't make it through because then I started to want to throw up again and again um, so another crew member took over for the last hour of my watch and the next morning I had a watch and I couldn't even do it so they had to do do my watch for me which I felt bad about that was day one day two I felt a little better I did all my watches but I felt like headachey and super tired which of course is part of being seasick you, you just feel exhausted all the time and all I did was get up do my watches go right back to bed um, so I hardly ate any food today's the third day my appetite's back I'm feeling great so kind of like to anybody watching this if you do get seasick or you're afraid you might what will happen is it'll pass you're body will acclimatize to the movement of the boat and uh, you'll eventually just feel normal again or relatively normal still tiring to be in a moving boat that's always jostling around because your body is always trying to stabilize yourself and it's almost like a workout <laughs> core workout and uh, yeah here comes another one so yeah you get these ones that come right up to my window See what I mean? And that's just splashing the window. That's not even sometimes when it did it again. Sometimes when it goes under the boat, it'll actually slam into the opposing hull and go under the wave goes under the boat and doesn't boat can't turn back quick enough before it hits the inner hull of the opposite side and just boom hits it really really hard. On our first passage to Namibia, the wind was from the other side, so it was our hull getting slammed into. Now the wind is coming from our side on the port side, so it's slamming into the starboard hull. Um, yeah, so it's just something catamarans have happened. It's not this catamaran or any other catamaran. When you are on a beam reach and there's big, big waves, you're going to get some slamming, side slamming. And that's all there is to it. And then every once in a while, you're going to get waves pounding against your port lights here on the side, which is uh, interesting. You keep thinking that's going to come right in and crash into you into your bed. So that's what it's been up and nothing other than that. We had the, the, the dolphins that I probably only showed, already showed you uh, footage for, but we haven't had any wildlife. Now then again, it's been wavy and crappy outside. So guys aren't hanging out at the rail looking for animals either. Um, and it's also was until today quite cold. So nobody really wanted to sit out on the bow of the boat just uh, enjoying the water going by getting splashed in freezing cold temperatures so it's been uh, less than enjoyable let's just say but we're more than well we're three days into a seven day passage to St. Helena and we already feel it getting warmer we're out of that Antarctic current now so I can actually wear a t-shirt yay that's it for now ciao so now that I feel better I'll get a lot more filming done I didn't feel like even picking up the camera at all 
when uh, I felt seasick. You just don't want to focus on anything. You feel better until you try and focus on something, you know, writing in a log book or doing something where you got to focus your attention and then with everything moving around, you just feel bleh again. So no interest in filming, no interest in writing anything in the log book, no interest in doing much of anything. So it's a lesson. Anyways, I'll show you some of the footage of what's going on around us. Okay, they're going back into the engine room to possibly change the impeller on the generator. Mac, it is June 11th. We are a little bit more than halfway between Namibia and St. Helena Island. As you know from Namibia, we had a little bit of engine, uh, sorry, uh, water maker issues with the, we think the membrane is damaged because of the biomass we went through on the way into Namibia. We also found out when we were in Namibia that there was a big oil spill not too long ago. They've been scraping oil crap off the walls of the harbor. So maybe it's pollution. Anyways, the water maker wasn't working. Then we worked on it and scrubbed everything, the pre-filter, the filters, everything. And the water maker sort of came back to life. And then we ran it a few more times and it's back to where it was, where the sensor is saying that there's the water is just too dirty to go into the tank. So what we're doing is we're filling one tank with the questionable water and we're doing the other tank as drinking water. So that was problem number one that we have. And now problem number two is that the generator uh, overheated. And we went inside the engine room and we checked the water strainer and the exhaust water. No water's going through it. So our first guess is that the impeller is needing to be replaced. Something must have happened. Hopefully it's the impeller. If not, we don't know what we're gonna do because we can't be without a generator for too long. There he is. So job one is changing the impeller, hopefully, right? Yeah, and I gotta say, even though these are not ideal conditions for doing uh, no. this kind of service work, uh, take a look at this this engine room installation. It's it's absolutely impeccable. I mean, this is like a laboratory in here, and the way that all of the line runs are laid out, and there's very clear labeling. Every valve, every through hole, every hose is labeled clearly. And so even though this is my first time aboard this vessel, I was immediately able to identify the lines that are needed and what's what and solve the problem. So it's it's an impressive installation. I've yeah, it's very, very, one. very clean, very organized. So you just took the, the hood off this generator? Yeah, you... I just pulled the hood off here, the raw water pump is right here and I'm just gonna unscrew the uh, the nuts that are holding this guy on, actually little bolts that are holding this on and uh, inspect the impeller. Let's see what we find. I'm kinda hoping it is damaged, right? That's Otherwise okay. we yeah, don't know yeah. what we're gonna do. Yeah, we want a problem with the name, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, we just heard from Steve. It is actually the impeller. It's fried, which is kinda good news. So he's in there changing it for the new one. As you see, we're still putting up with uh, Pretty big swell, 20 knots of wind. This is what the uh, impeller looks like. Clearly we fried it, which is kind of good news because at least we know what it is. Yeah. So you're gonna find the pieces that came off. Yeah, check that out. Problem one was the water maker. We still haven't resolved that issue, but we can make water. It's just slightly more parts per million that we would love. So trying to stick with one tank that has better water. Part, problem two has been solved. That was our generator problem. 
uh, we found out the impeller was fried. I don't know what caused that. We're thinking maybe because of the waves that the uh, water intake was out of the out of the water a bunch of times. Maybe the impeller ran dry slightly and overheated it. Who knows? Cause we, clearly, it's not an old boat, so this impeller should have lasted longer. But uh, anyways, that is good news that that is the problem. Because if we opened it up and the impeller was perfect, then we didn't have any idea how we are going to get water to go through the generator. And without a generator, well, it would suck. We'd have to run the engines to charge the batteries every once in a while, which would not exactly the most optimal way to uh, recharge your batteries, but uh, would have worked, I guess. That is one problem down. So when we get to St. Helena, maybe there'll be a part waiting from Spectra to replace the membrane in the water maker. If not, we'll just deal with water that's not as clean as it could be. And hopefully we don't have any side effects from that. So sort of a good news day. We'll end that episode there on a happy note as we're more than halfway to St. Helena Island. You're going to see in the next episode, we even get higher winds and even more violent, confused seas. And I feel great. So that's a good sign. And uh, yeah, we get on to St. Helena Island and the beauty that is there. It is going to be breathtaking. So you can look forward to that in future episodes. Hopefully you found this episode informative and entertaining. If so, show the channel some love by giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button so you don't miss any of the future episodes. And until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising. Hope you go out there and explore the beauty around you. And ciao for now. We anchor and hoist the sails.